Hello everybody. It's Laura here. Um, I always start with um. I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. It's like my favorite word when I stop to think. So, welcome to my channel. Please, if you enjoy this video when it's done, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it. This is a 12 by 12. We are doing a, um, let's see, it's going to be a bloom technique, but it's going to be like a Dutch pour where we blow all over the canvas. So not sure what it's called, but that's what it's going to be. So I am using my bloom, um, ingredients here because it's going to be with a cell activator so this is color place um color place antique white right out of the container and i have done nothing to it i'm going to spread it out here so you can see how this goes So we're going to get it out to the edges. We'll worry about the edges later because it may just go over itself. Now, some people notice when they're doing this on a bigger canvas that your center kind of goes down a little bit. If you want to remedy that and keep that center up, you could do a couple things. You could spray with a spray bottle the back of your canvas with water. Kind of let it dry for a little bit. That will tighten your canvas. Um, the other thing you can do is put something under the center, like a, a dry sponge or something underneath there to hold that center up. I have never noticed that, I mean, I know it kind of goes down in a little bit, but I've never noticed that it gave me any trouble as far as the whole painting goes. So now what I am going to do here is I'm going to add an extra little bit in the center here. So it's got something to move over when I lay down my colors and when it's time to blow them. I'm using um, quite a few colors here. What do I have? Six, 11. <laughs> and what I'm doing, I want to use really dark colors so that they show up well on this white. So this is uh, I think it says dioxys in purple. Now, we don't need to go all the way out to the edge because as we spin, that's going to move out to the edge. So I want to make sure I have enough paint down here because I'm looking. This is a 12 by 12. So for these colors to be vibrant like I want them to be, um, we need enough paint to work its way outward. Okay. So I'm putting down quite a bit. This is this little piggy twilight. So I'm kind of going for, um, jewel tones here. And I'm going to kind of spread them out. This is about the, oh, this is about an inch or an inch and a quarter width here. Some people just pour their paints right on the canvas. I never have luck with that. I get too heavy handed or not enough or it doesn't go where I want to. So I like to use 
my little sticks. This one is Key Lime Piggy. This is to give it a little bit of brightness. This Key Lime is one, you wouldn't think so, but it's one of my all-time favorite colors because it, it inserts some brightness into your painting you can't have all dark colors or you know all the same hue darkness to lightness you need something to pop to make it exciting so we're just going to keep layering this down I haven't done one of these in a long time. Um, so here's the deal. When you want to do a Dutch pour, your this is not a Dutch pour I'm doing. This is my replacement for the Dutch pour. When you want to do a Dutch pour, your paints have to be very, very thin. So that's like a 70-30 mixture. 70 um 70 percent floetrol and 30 percent paint so it is wait let me make sure on that before i tell you that um oh no 80 milliliter yeah that's right 80 milliliters floetrol 40 milliliters paint and 30 milliliters water so what i do I have my Dutch pour paints in these kind of bottles because they're so thin and they're different than this. But I really hate having to maintain two sets of paints. So that's when I saw this, this bloomy Dutch that I thought I can do my blooms with, or do these with my bloom paints and I wouldn't need to maintain a second set of paints. Everything could be done with these and then I don't have these two separate sets. And so I really like that. Um, it's worked well for me. This technique has and I don't have to have that separate set of paints. So that's what I'm doing in my mind with this type of pour and it turns out giving you not quite the same look but pretty close to like the same style and I'm happy with it and I'm really not that good at the Dutch pour itself with the very thin uh, colors and so this worked out well for me now I started out, I love the bloom, and I started out doing blooms first. And this is really not the way you want to go. As a beginner, you want to start with a, an easier um, technique until you get the hang of it and progress to harder. But I love these blooms, and I was determined to get them and that's what I started first so I went hard and I got moved to easier stuff it's kind of weird but then that easier stuff isn't so intimidating as it might have been had I started with it now you can see this is a lot of paint and that's good. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Now I'm missing all. Here we go. Couldn't find my stir sticks. All right, now I'm going to the darker blue. This is, what is this? Prussian blue. Now, I want a lot of this because I want that darker look with some lighter stuff peeking through. So we're going to put a lot of this down. 
You could just slap it down any way you want. Because it's all going to get blown all over the place anyway. This color I really love. This is called Sapphire by this little piggy. And this looks like a beautiful blue that you see in royalty. Whoa, this is too thick. One second. We're going to use the big hair dryer today because we've got to move this paint quite a distance. So it is raining like crazy outside and the temperature is dropping right now. It was 52 beautiful degrees here in Ohio today. Now it is 32 degrees. So this is going to change to snow and, well, ice first. But I'm in the room where my sump pump is. I don't know if you can hear it. It's pretty quiet. But it's pumping like crazy. Hopefully it keeps doing its job. Okay, my last color, well, second to last, because I'm going to add something pretty on the top. This is boysenberry. This is a beautiful, royal-looking purple. Look at that. That's going to be pretty. Now, since we have these dark colors on the top, I do want to put an interference on top of these dark colors. So we're going to use the, um, oh, the paint's tipping over. We're going to use the, I don't know, what should I do, gold or velvet? I think we're going to go with the gold. It's a very regal jewel tone type of color. So let's introduce some of that. Just going to drizzle that on top here. Let's go with a good amount. All right, here we go. Those are our colors. You know me and my colors. I always go overboard on the colors. They sit there and tell people, oh, just use two or three or four colors. I could never do that. I can't do it. <laughs> I just cannot do it. <laughs> and you know, sometimes it does look very nice with fewer colors because you get, you can see more of the contrast, but I really like the rainbow look. I really do. So I have shaken my cell. Whoa, my cell activator is squirting out here. I have shaken my cell activator. Now I'm going to put one line of it down here. I am quickly going to get my hair dryer. We're not going to fiddle around with this. I'm going to hold it at an angle. Ready. Now, I'm going to add a little more cell activator here. And I'm going to do the other side.
this is pretty and I'm okay with a little bit of negative space because that's what a Dutch pour usually has look at these cells so now what I want to do is turkey baster the center So it's a bloom, but it's just like a Dutch pour. We've got this look of this flow out here, the feathery flow. Okay, we're going to let it do its work for a few minutes. Let me get a paper towel. Well, not a few minutes. We don't have to wait that long. Oh, this is really pretty. So we're getting the cells in the center, but we're getting that flowiness out here. Now, I think I may, actually, I don't think, I know I'm going to um, kind of swirl the center a little bit. So I might just to break up some of that cell activator, which it did, and that's going to be pretty. Um, let's, let's just go crazy on this outer edge just in case it doesn't spin all the way off. Oh, that's pretty okay we'll see if it stays or if it disappears a little bit of something right here kind of bring some color out all right I like that we are ready to spin this thing is gonna fall on my painting before I'm done let me get my stuff out of the way super pretty Okay, everything's out of the way. Here we go. Gentle spin at first, so the paint goes out and over the edges. Oh, wow. <gasps> Look at this. Oh, it's pretty. I like it. Okay, now... Before we spend too much more, we have some work to do. We've got to get this out over the corner. We have to get it out over this edge. It's taken just fine over here. So maybe what we can do, since it's taken fine here and here, going over the edge, we'll just turn the whole thing one turn, and then that should take care of the 
edges it didn't go over. Not sure why it does that because this is a perfectly square painting. So now we want to turn it like so and spin. Oh, this is scrumptious. And yes, it has brought the paint. Eh, no, we're going to have to help this a little bit here. Right here. Give it a little assistance. It'll go. Actually, let's tilt. side went all right so the only place where this edge right here is not happy so let's take this and move it out more so that more will go that way edge is just being persnickety wait till you see I'm going to show you what I'm thinking of working on next I, I don't I don't like this I want to tip this off because everywhere else looks nice and natural this does not so I want to get rid of that white There we go. That looks better. Oh, guys, look at this. This is beyond beautiful. All right, now let me check them up. See? A little bit right there. And right here. Okay, now our edges are good. So we're going to spin again. Whoa. Let's see what we got. Oh man, this is gorgeous. I really love it. Um, I'm stopping there. The only thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my skewer. Where did it go? There, we'll use one of these. We're going to get rid of these few. white blobs not blobs white dots that's the pillow paint coming up through 
I don't mind them. Some people do. And there's a few over here. can just kind of push them back down in. So what do you think? Drop me some comments what you think about this. This is definitely, definitely um, deep jewelry colors. No, I think so. Beautiful. Oh, th this, this is quickly going to become my favorite painting. But what you can see is you get the Dutch, uh, the Dutch pour look by doing a bloom. Um, just using that same recipe as the bloom, sending it that way, sending it the other way. We wrecked our center black line a little so it wasn't just so full. And I really love it. So I'm going to take you down. I'm going to show you this up close. And then I'm going to show you two other things that I'm going to work on. Or an idea that I have. So here we go. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do this little idea I have yet but we can talk about it so here is all that beautiful color you can see the golden um uh ball gown on the top that was ball gown i used right yes that's a ball gown on top that is giving that golden color but look at these cells they are just so pretty I love it so here's the whole painting gorgeous all right now I'm gonna to to walk you over here to the other side of my situation here this is this is like my work table I have my paints on one of those things I have completed tiles in this bin these are my paintings that have most been done most recently that are still kind of drying I love this one. That one turned out really great. Um, and all my mixing bottles and supplies and stuff. And then I got this rack over here that holds stuff. I got this rack over here that holds all my paints and stuff. So, two things I'm going to be working on. This thing. I want to take the door off. I want to paint over the lion's just with like an inset of paint pouring and I also want to paint the top so that's that may be project number one because I think it'll be easier than project number two project number two is going to be this thing I've had it for a while it's got a little drawer that pulls out you could put stuff in it so I'm going to take that knob off the front and I'm just going to paint the front of the drawer and then I want to paint this top. The top does not slide out. It does not come out. It's attached. So I'm going to have to tape it off all around with painter's tape. My only concern is that the paint isn't going to spin off. So I think I'm going to do a swipe since you can use the least amount of paint uh, base with that. So I think that's what I'm going to do with it. So that's a project that's coming up. I can't wait to see how it turns out. But you can look around your house, see what kind of furniture you got, and little doodads and figure out what you can do with it. But I'm excited to try this one. I think I'll have this. When this cabinet is done, I think it'll hold my little piggies. Um, all my pigments. So anyway, and this over here, this is my painting 
this is where all my paints are. These are all the paints that I have. There's like one of every sort of shade of color. <laughs> and then this is right next to me. This is where all my paints are while I'm working. Here's my box. Here's my, uh, my colors. Oh, now you know what? I just realized you are going to be upside down again. I should have had it like this. So here's my box. That's what I'm working with. These are all my colors. This is stuff I have to paint on. This is my other table. That, that's where I do my paint mixing and stuff. So that is my little studio. And there we go. All right, guys, if you like the video, please, please, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. All right. Good night, everybody.